The newest version of Android, which is Android 11, brings a lot of new features. But here is the thing, you might not get all of them. The reason being, Google uses Android as an umbrella term and markets some of their own products and services as Android features, which are not necessarily part of the Android open source project and therefore might be skipped by some Android device vendors or might be completely modified by Android skins like MIUI, One UI, Oxygen OS. This has happened with Android 10. We got super hyped about new features and when we finally got the update, we got disappointed as vendors had skipped them or modified them. So instead in this video, I will go through top 11 Android 11 features that really matter and everyone who gets the Android 11 update will definitely receive. Then 4 more features that might benefit specific people based on their device hardware. After watching this video, do like and subscribe if you found it informative. Now with all of that out of the way, let's get started. Notifications Google has added and improved a lot of features related to notifications. How they are displayed, grouped and how we interact with them. The notification shade is now divided into three sections, conversations, notifications and silent notifications. As we move away from actual voice calling and rely more and more on text-based messaging, it's good to see Android making them a separate and top priority section in the notifications. All the chat-based notifications will appear here. If you hold on to individual notification, there are three settings. Priority is first. If you set priority, they will appear in the top conversation section and appear in status bar with their own profile feature. Second is default, where based on phone settings, it may ring or vibrate and then silent, no sound and vibrations and it appears lowest in the conversation section. All of this can be configured on individual person or group basis. Previously when you had do not disturb activated on your phone, you could allow calls and SMS from just starred contacts and not from third party messaging apps and that was a big problem. Most of the time, if you wanted to be left alone, you would just turn on the do not disturb. And when someone from family or friends would send you a WhatsApp, Telegram or message from any other messaging app regarding something that's urgent, it wouldn't get through d, &D. It was really frustrating. This changes with Android 11. Remember how you could set some conversations as high priority? You can now allow those priority conversations to get through d, &D. Do note, this is not turned on by default. Open settings. Search for Do Not Disturb and tap on the text, not the toggle, the text. Open People, here we have a new option, Conversations. Select Priority Conversations. Moving on to the next feature. It has happened to all of us. We have a notification and we want to keep it there in the notification shade for later. And then we accidentally swipe it away and it's gone forever. Thankfully with Android 11, you can get to those dismissed notifications. Just open settings, apps and notifications, notifications, notification history. We are finally there. It's deep down there, but thankfully it's there. Now based on how your device manufacturer implements their settings app, this location may change. This setting has to be manually turned on for the very first time and then it will start recording only those notifications that you have received after you have turned on this feature. Here we have recently dismissed sorted by time and then older notifications are grouped by app which in turn are again sorted by time. Once this feature is enabled, you can quickly jump to history from notification shade by pulling down and hitting the history button. Bubbles for chats. Android has borrowed the chat heads feature from Facebook Messenger and made it available to all chat apps. When you receive a message, you can pop out the person and the best part is messages from different apps stay together in this new bubble interface. You can continue working, playing and simultaneously chatting. Do note, the developer has to make changes to their side to use this feature. You also get additional options where you can control which conversations from that app can bubble. Privacy As people are becoming more and more cautious regarding privacy and how apps, operating systems and websites track them, it's a good thing to see Google taking steps in the right direction and borrow some of the features from iOS. Improvements to the way apps can access your location Location data is by far the most exploited and most misused feature. Apps had been spying on users' location continuously and selling that data to others. 
employers were tracking location of on-field salespeople continuously. But with Android 11, you are now in control. Therefore, this can be said as one of the biggest changes in Android since its launch. Android 11 has made it extremely difficult for apps to continuously access location in the background. Following new options pop up when an app wants to ask you for location permission. As you can see, always all option is gone. If you think some app shouldn't require a location data, you can straight away deny it. Or in cases of apps like Facebook, where it requires location data sometimes, like for checking in or adding location tag on Instagram, you can set ask every time. This way, the app will have to ask for your location every time it really needs it. The highest level of location tracking is allow only while using the app. You may give this permission to food delivery apps or weather apps or cab hailing apps where the app in fact needs the location as soon as you open the app every single time to show relevant information and will continue needing it while the app is open on screen. But as soon as you close the app, it can no longer track you in the background. To track you continuously in the background, apps will have to get permission from Google first while publishing the app on Play Store. Google will then check, does this app really need this always on location tracking? Is the user made aware of such tracking? And if the core functionality of the app cannot be achieved without this feature, like for geofencing apps or family safety apps to share location of family members. And after all of this, even if the app gets approval from Google as an exception app and gets published on the Play Store, the app cannot just raise a prompt asking for permission. It will have to redirect the user deep into settings and permissions, where the user will finally see the switch and will have to manually turn it on. Speaking of prompts, we come to the next feature. If an app keeps on repeatedly prompting you for permission, even after you denying it, Android will revoke the ability of that app to ask for that permission again. Now this is a welcome feature and should silence all those annoying apps. Next is a privacy feature in which Android is leading the game by introducing something new instead of merely copying iOS and playing catch up. Auto reset permission from unused apps. If the user has not used an app for a few months, then Android will remove those permissions which the user had granted to the app. And the next time the app is used, it will have to ask for those permissions again. This feature is genuinely unique and useful. We have hundreds of apps installed on our phones, most of them lying unused for months but still might be siphoning our data. Now, as the tables have turned, I hope that Apple is taking notes. Picture-in-picture -picture resizing Picture-in-picture -picture allows you to continue watching a video in a tiny window even after closing the app. This feature is also used for video calls and navigation directions. Android has had this feature for years now, but it was not possible to resize the window. But now you can. Tiny change, but still worth mentioning. You can now pin apps to the share sheet. Finally. Just tap and hold an app in the share sheet and select pin. Ethernet tethering. You can now share your phone's internet by connecting an ethernet adapter and connecting the other end of the ethernet cable to the PC. If you are one of those people who frequently use their phone's connection via hotspot, do consider using this feature for higher speeds. The ethernet tethering option is available under usual hotspots section of settings app. However, the toggle appears grayed out till you actually connect an adapter. Android had this weird limitation where you couldn't record a video of size more than 4GB with almost every phone now having 4K recording capability. With some phones starting to receive 8K capability, it's a relief that this restriction is finally being removed. However, camera apps have to update their code to make use of this change. Now moving on to features that might benefit specific people based on their device hardware. More and more upcoming devices have started to ship displays of higher refresh rate like 90Hz, 120Hz and so on. A new API on Android 11 lets apps inform the Android platform of their intended frame rate. Android is continuing its native support for foldables with new APIs so that device manufacturers can easily innovate for this new form factor. One such new feature is hinge angle detection. Foldables like Surface Duo and Samsung Fold can support multiple hinge angles. App developers had to use each device manufacturer's SDK in the past to access this information. 
Having multiple SDKs for different devices was a tedious process. Now using this new API, it is more streamlined and apps can read the display angle directly using a single API without worrying who had manufactured the device and adjust the UI according to it. Samsung should be credited for creating and jumpstarting the curved screen displays with Galaxy Note Edge. This style quickly caught on and the market is flooded with waterfall displays. While these displays do look cool, giving the illusion of zero bezels on the sides, they have this irritating drawback of accidental touches. And even after so many years of software refinement to ignore these touches, they are still a huge annoyance in everyday use. Now luckily there is a new API, using which apps can get exact dimensions of the waterfall and avoid displaying UI elements in those areas to completely solve the accidental touch problem forever. 5G In 2020, more and more 5G capable devices are coming out. In order to take advantage of those speeds and to find out if the device is connected to the 5G, Android has a new 5G API. It allows apps to determine which type of 5G network the phone is connected to right now. Here are some more bonus features which I didn't include in the top list as they might or might not make it to everyone. Even if you get them, they might be altered by the Android skin you are using. The app switcher too has changed. And those app recommendations and quick search bar that you used to get on Android 10 2 is gone, which is all now replaced with a screenshot button and a select button. This select button can be used to select text that appears on screen inside an app. This can be pretty handy if the app doesn't natively allow selecting and copying text that appears in it. Also, even if you change the launcher or do something like Nova, these two buttons are still available. But here's the catch. You might get this feature only if you have stock Android or Android 1. Because even clean stock Android skins like Oxygen OS completely change the app's feature interface. There's also another feature that I want to talk about, which is app suggestions. So Pixel Launcher now has this cool new feature where it can suggest apps on the bottom row on home screen. You can call it the dock area, just above the Google search widget. But here's the thing, this is a Pixel Launcher feature and not an Android feature. So it technically doesn't even qualify to be on the list. Unless you have a Pixel phone or manually installed the Pixel Launcher app, you won't get it. It is not part of the Android code. and so there is zero chance that your phone manufacturer will give you this feature. But other reviewers are still covering it. And it is understandable. It is due to the coolness factor. This makes the home screen proactive. You can keep the home screen clean and get exactly the apps that you want at the right time when you open the device based on your usage pattern. In the time that I got to spend with it, I rarely had to open up the app drawer. Most of the times, the app I wanted was already waiting for me. You can also block certain apps from getting suggested. This is necessary because sometimes when you hand over your phone to someone, there might be certain apps that you don't want just sitting there in the dock. There's yet another thing which is borrowed from iOS. The media player control is now part of the quick settings area just like it is in control center section of iOS. But I highly doubt that anyone will get this one, as Android skins are very picky about the quick settings designs. And every quick settings section looks and works different. So that's it, this wraps up today's video. Do let me know in the comment section which Android skin you are using right now and which Android alien feature you are most excited about. If you found this video informative, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to get more such videos. I have many videos in the pipeline in the coming weeks. Also, share this video with your friends who are waiting for this new version of Android. You can also follow me on Instagram and Twitter, where I post more frequently with stories as soon as they happen. Thanks for watching this video. I am Pushkar Gaikwad and see you guys in the next one.